again, everyone. So our next speaker is Kevin Son, who is a junior majoring in computer science. He's also a member of the USC debate team and excited to talk about social issues in STEM education. Kevin's tech talk is called The Story of Science. Please give a round of applause for Kevin Son. It's a nightmare. Somehow, you're back in your public weeder class. To your left is a student rummaging through his backpack, trying to find the lab that's due in two hours. And to your right is someone else updating their LinkedIn profile with future, incoming, full-time Starbucks associate. Now, in the midst of the chaos of everyone getting set up, you start noticing the professor has started to talk. And within 30 minutes, half the class is asleep, and the other half is asking whether seg faults are on the midterm. Now you're confused. You have no idea what's going on, and so much so you really don't want to ask a question because it'll reveal how embarrassingly little you know about the topic at hand. And to be honest, do you really want to prolong your suffering with another 10-minute response? At this point, I'm sure someone in the audience has asked themselves, what are we even doing here? If you did, I'm right there with you. And according to the NCBI, over 30% of college students are too. We live in an epidemic of purposelessness. No one knows what they want to do or why they're doing what they're doing. And it's a paradox because right now we have a graduating class of the most technically proficient college students in all of human history, yet we find ourselves more lost than ever. This is not an accident. More or less, we're all here because we never really left that freshman year lecture hall. We're here because we're in a treadmill a content treadmill, where the goal is to maximize information retention, find all the patterns, and to optimize the system that's been dropped before us, no questions asked. When everything we know is fed to us like a lecture, then a group of highly skilled, yet highly apathetic students is an inevitability. Now, we're all familiar with this problem, and it's honestly so obvious that it's really hard to imagine a system beyond it. But what if there was some other way? How can we envision a future that's just so hard to grasp? To answer this question, to move forward into this future, we need to move, we need to move back into the past, way back. Uh, for some people out there, perhaps even two decades back, because what I mean is kindergarten. And for a moment, I want you to think really deeply about that time. And sorry, because a lot of oddities about being a toddler might come to mind, you know, the drooling on the tables, the, the militaristic napping. But the one thing that's so fascinating about that period is that you're learning everything for the first time. You're a blank slate. Your teacher can't reference whatever you learned in the previous grade. Everything must be built from the ground up. And how did we deal with this? Well, when your teacher was approaching these five-year-old aliens that barely know English, they opened up a book, and not an encyclopedia or a reference manual, a storybook. And in a soothing voice, your teacher told some Dr. Seuss tale about counting fish that teach you the fundamentals of math. Teachers do this for a reason. Educational studies across the board overwhelmingly demonstrate that presenting information in terms of a story with a setup, a conflict resolution, means that your audience can retain the information better, be more enthusiastic about it, and be less distracted. Kindergartners, probably the most concentrated group of the most unconcentrated individuals on the entire planet, second only to college students, are the perfect audience. Now, it might sound too simple, might sound too naive, but I think here lies a solution. 
what we need is for universities to be a little more like kindergartens. Less lectures, more stories. Now, what I mean is not substitute Robin Hood, the crypto system, for Robin Hood, the fictional novel, but altering our perspective on education. What we need is less lecture slides with bullet point content and more class periods that begin and end with a narrative. We need less encyclopedic textbooks that are based on rote memorization and more discussions about the people behind the technology, their experiences, and discovering them with stories. Stories teach values, stories have purpose, and more importantly, stories spark curiosity. Now imagine if, instead of just learning about math equations in class, you were told the story of how Pythagoras traveled to the Sea of Ionia, went around the islands, met a couple of blacksmiths, and hearing the sounds of their hammers hitting the iron, developed the trig ratios that we'd be using to construct buildings three millennia later. Imagine if instead of just learning about general relativity equations, you were taught how Einstein stumbled upon them while studying some combinatorial violin music. What these stories integrate is the human behind the technology that's being invented. With a holistic description of the intellectual feats, you have a holistic description of the flaws, struggles, and choices that were made along the way. No part of the scientific process is left out, a process that involves more than just a hypothesis and finding. And we honestly need this more now than ever, um, because we have such a weird and bizarre record of technological progress. People know about Edison, not Tesla. People know about Jobs, not Wozniak. Our fixation on the end product as arising out of nowhere has unwittingly biased us to tales of miraculous success by do-it-yourself individuals. And we see this all the time when folks idolize Elon Musk as a person who wished into existence SpaceX and sent us to the moon, ignoring the long pipeline of public scientists that made that future possible. What we need is to center technology within a broader social context, not structured by a set of independent mechanical parts, but an ecosystem of individuals, groups, and the environment. And that's the beauty of storytelling. We tell stories through characters, their interactions, and the world that they're situated in. And we tell stories about technology we have the opportunity to imagine a future beyond the one that we have now, illuminating the person behind, in front, and around the technology that we use. We have the opportunity to change the world by changing the way we teach each other. And the beautiful part about all of it is that everyone can do it. Everyone has a story to tell. One thing I find so beautiful about that first freshman experience is that it's the first time, and sadly the only time, that STEM majors see themselves from an external perspective. That initial moment of frustration, anger, and stress can't be summarized in a lecture. And when you complain about that moment, you're not speaking as a lecturer, you're speaking as a friend. The technical vocabulary that we're taught in classes is too limited to describe these experiences and therefore too limited to change the world. We're gonna need more than answers to when and how to if we're gonna be creating systems that will transform the trajectory of our future. We're gonna need more than imperative and conditional statements if we're gonna write the history we'll be giving to future generations. Together, we have the capacity to write a story that will be told for generations. And it all starts with us. Let's teach people outside of our domain. Let's teach people cryptography, for example, without just using Bob and Alice as the only characters. Let's narrate technological progress as the product of humanity. Let's situate technological narratives in the systems that haven't even been built yet. And ultimately, and most importantly, Let's all leave that freshman lecture hall and tell each other the story of how we did it. <laughs>